All right, friends, good afternoon and welcome in. It's an exciting day as we are getting to take a look at the new agent sites. My name is Monica Perry. If I haven't had an opportunity to meet you yet, I am your Market Center Tech Trainer in Winston-Salem, Greensboro, Chapel Hill, Durham, and the Outer Banks. And I'm so excited you guys have joined me here today. So the new agent site experience has gone live. A couple of things to keep in mind. You do not have to convert over yet if you're not ready. We're going to discuss whether you are or are not ready for the new agent site experience today. Um, we're going to take a look at the new bells and whistles, things that are to come, and really just go through the whole process here. So please ask questions. Um, this is your time. I want you guys to ask questions and be able to get answers. Without further ado, I'm going to drop these resources into the chat for you. And you guys can access these as updates happen with the new agent websites. I will be updating this. This is a Google Sheet. So if you keep this in your Google Drive under your Shared With Me folder, you will be able to see any new additions as they populate into the system. Okay. So um, I do love the new agent sites. I love the look of them. I love some of the new features that we got, but there are a few things that you need to keep in mind before you convert over. So don't feel a rush to make this change. I know it can be exciting to get a brand new shiny toy. And just remember, you don't have to convert yet. Okay. Um, so just highlighting that. So here's what our new agent sites do have. They have really great default pages. They have dynamic featured properties, which we're going to take a look at. They have new blog functionality, which I really love. There's an easy way for us to create open house sign-ins from the sites. Coming soon, we have preferred vendor pages that we're going to be able to add, a home value tool, our team version of the sites are going to roll out. Even if you're on a team, you can still activate your individual agent site if that's something that you're ready to do. Um, just know that in the future, the team site will roll out. That will be managed from your Rainmakers account, and they will be able to feature all of you guys on their actual team website when those do come out. Okay, so we got a new look. We have the ability to use a GIF as a background. So I know a lot of folks wanted this video um, functionality to be rolling across the screen like what you see right now at this moment. We do have this ability. It needs to be saved as a GIF or a GIF file to be able to upload it into the system. Um, I just wanted it to be there as I know that's not the best quality video there. I need to actually purchase a video which leads me to another thing to say, which is if you don't own the pictures, please don't put them on your website. We can get hit with copyright infringements with that kind of stuff. I have purchased these pictures of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is where I'm located, and the other pictures. So when you see the interior, those are owned by KW. They're built into the sites by default. We have full access right to those images as well. Um, so if you're going to change anything out, just make sure that you own it before you do so. But I will show you exactly where you can make those changes as well. Okay. So this is the search, right? They can search by current location like they could in the previous experience. So I'm just searching by current location. It's going to populate up a map and pinpoint me. If my internet would cooperate with us. <laughs> It's thinking about it. There we go. Come on. Okay, so now it's gonna zoom into the map and show you Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The blue lines again are neighborhoods, which we've had previously. Um, I can see the listings populating over here on the left that are within this map view. I can slide down through them right here and I can see the map changing. I can start to see prices populating. I can see my little pinpoint showing you where I am located and showing your consumer where they are currently located. 
they can click into a property of interest and so maybe they like this one. I'm going to click and bring you into the property details page. This is what those look like. They can go through these images here. Whoa, that's a bright house. And they can scroll through. This person loves color. And then they can start scrolling down and seeing the details. They can tab through the details. They can see the information to contact you over on the right-hand side of the screen here. This one has an open house coming up this Sunday, so they will be able to see if an open house is coming up. The property description, property details, upcoming open houses, estimated monthly payments. They can get quotes from Keller Home Loans and Keller Covered, which is our insurance company. They can see price and tax history here. A little bit about the neighborhood. This is West End, so they can go to the neighborhood and it's going to show them information about the neighborhood in which the property is located. I'll let that load up there for a second while we keep looking around. Nearby schools, transit and commute times, similar properties, a map, and listings that are located within that map view. So again, this is all on that property details page. And here's that West End market summary here. So this is what it looks like on that neighborhood page. Notice one thing, we have lost the Yelp integration that exists on our current website experience. I do not have an answer yet as to whether that will come back. Um, but if you have the current website and you click into the neighborhood, there is a Yelp section there that shows you restaurants, grocery stores, things of that nature in the area. So just something to keep in mind that that is currently not active. Okay. So that's a property page. We're going to go back to the home screen here. Featured properties. In the previous experience, you could feature up to 12 properties. I liked that you could do that. What I did not like is you had to manually select those 12 properties. And if those properties went under contract or closed, it did not update them for you. Not the case in the new experience. In the new experience, these featured properties are dynamic. You can have it searching a radius around a certain location. You can have it just showing a zip code, a specific city, whatever you like. You can adjust what price range shows. So if you're a luxury agent and you really only want to feature properties in my market, the luxury threshold is $700,000. So if I only wanted luxury properties to show up as featured, I could set the price point to $700,000 plus. And that would only show luxury properties as my featured properties, which I think is really neat. Maybe on the other hand, you really focus in on first time home buyers. You could shorten that price range and make it fit your target market, which I think is really cool. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Any existing testimonials on your current experience of the agent website will not go away. They will still be there listed you will be able to add them to the new experience from the back end of the system. And I'm going to show you guys where you can do that. But this is how they will display. Previously, we could only display 12. There is now no limit. You can display as many testimonials as you would like, which I think is great. Okay. We have a blog. Yay. Everybody always wanted blogs and here they are. Keller Williams has given us our first four. You can turn them off if you don't want the Keller Williams blogs to show up. They will continue to push out more content that we can use, but we can also write our own blog content if we would like. You just need to add an image and you can write out your own blog, maybe using a little chat GPT. Some AI to give us some blog content is something that we could do. Something to keep in mind, when you convert to this new site, if you had any existing landing pages that were standalone, we will not be able to access those any longer. 
they will be coming. I do not have a date. We will get standalone landing pages back, but I do not have a date for that. Okay. Second thing, if you had any customized pages on your agent website, I, I wish I could still show you mine, um, but I did convert over. So you cannot convert back. Once you convert, it's done. There's no, no backwards, right? Um, but I did have some custom pages that I had added about neighborhoods, about other different things. Um, the answer from KWRI right now is to put it in a blog, put that content into a blog, but just like landing pages. And I think earlier than when we will see standalone landing pages, we will get the ability to create again, those custom pages on our website, but it is not here yet. So again, are you ready to convert? That's up to you, but I'm just here to make sure that I explain to you what is still there and what is not still there and what is new, okay? So no more custom pages for now, no more standalone landing pages for now, but we did pick up the ability to create a blog, okay? Then we have all of our data down here at the bottom. This data is still coming from our marketing profile in command. Okay, so all still generating from the marketing profile in command, which we will take a look at as a reminder of how to access that information. Okay, I'm going to drop the resource guide that we're working off of back into the chat again for those of us that came in a little bit later. The link in the chat takes you to this page, which is explaining what's new on the agent sites. This is a Google Sheet. As we continue to get new functionality, I will be updating this sheet. So if you just keep accessing it in your shared folder in Google Drive, you will have the most updated version of this. And I will continue to teach as things continue to come out, okay? So we took a look at what's there. There's an About Me page like we always have that is populating your information that's in your marketing profile, what right. languages you speak, a little blog about yourself. And for preferred vendors for now, it just says, I work with exceptional businesses and service providers. If you want information and recommendations, contact me. And it's got a contact me button, which looks like this. Okay. Coming soon, we will get those vendor pages, which are supposed to be really nice. They're supposed to show up as cards. And when they click the card, it flips it and shows the vendor information. And you will be able to give as much or as little information as you want is my understanding so that you can prompt folks to contact you instead of directly contacting the vendor. Okay, so we have that. And then under the more button is the leave a review button for now. And this is what the review looks like. We don't have to build this page anymore like we used to. We used to have to actually build the testimonial page, the capture page. We no longer have to do that. Any questions about what is currently available? We'll get into it a little bit deeper, but just as a overview. Checking the chat. Cool. Okay, great. So how do we access? I'm going to log into command into a demo account here so I can show you because I've already connected mine. So just bear with me. So let's first talk marketing profile because it is populating a lot of the information. So to access your marketing profile from your command account on the desktop experience, we're going to click on our name in the upper right corner Drop down, we're going to slide to settings, click. Over on the left-hand side, we're going to go to connect settings. So again, we clicked our name in the upper right, we chose settings, and then we came to the left to connect settings, marketing profile. So this is where you can upload your photo your team logo, if you're on a team, or if you're just an agent. I know I see Sean in here. Sean has his own logo. 
so he could upload his logo there. So it would show up on the website. This is where you could change your name, your license number, your job title, your slogan, designations and credentials. If you have a military affiliation, a short bio about yourself, your phone numbers, emails, website address, your brokerage information, your legal footer text, each office is independently owned and operated is required. Outside of that, you could add as much as you want. On my website, personally, I added a little blurb about the working with real estate agents. It shows up down here in my legal footer. And I linked it to the working with real estate agents brochure here in North Carolina, which is offered to us by the North Carolina Real Estate Commission on an, in an online format. So that way you're giving access to the working with real estate agents directly from your website. You could put that here in this legal footer text. That's where I put the blurb. This is where I added the link and I gave it a title. And then if you go to Google and just type working with real estate agents into your Google search and hit enter, you will see from the North Carolina Real Estate Commission, this is that online version of the brochure right here. All you need to do is copy that and paste it into the link area. That's how I did that. Okay. Social. This is where all your social profiles go. Please keep in mind, go to the social platform, right? So for instance, go to Instagram. Okay. I know most of us don't log into Instagram from our computer. It's easiest if you just go to Instagram on your computer. So just look at the login on your phone. Here's me. So I'm going to click on me. It's going to bring you to my Instagram profile. And then I can just grab this right here. Okay. And copy it. The reason it's important to go ahead and copy it is because it needs that HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash for it to be clickable to a consumer. Okay. And that way you're assured that it is the correct link. Questions on that? Any changes we make to our profile, make sure that we always click that save button down here at the bottom. Okay. So we're making sure that we're clicking that save button down here at the bottom. And then we'll get that confirmation that your marketing profile was successfully saved. So like I said, this is populating all of this information, all of this information about me. It's bringing in my logo up here, all of that kind of stuff. Good deal. So that's the first step. Make sure your marketing profile is up to date. Next step. Go ahead and close this down. When we're in command, we're still going to click on this last app on the left, which is called Consumer. And we're going to open that up. How do you get to the website from your marketing profile? Um, you will see, Susie, when you click on Consumer, this last app on the left, there are tabs um, that will show you in the current experience what your link is or if you're in the new experience it shows what your website is right here okay so this one for example is elite994.kw.com okay i just realized that i already converted this one hold on one sec i need to log into something else need to log into a different one I go into this one instead check and see if this one's done. Okay, so this is what the old experience looks like, okay? So at the top, you're going to see a banner that says upgrade to your new agent sites today, upgrade my website. Before you do that, okay, please, if you have built landing pages that you love, Go to your landing pages tab and copy the links that would exist here, okay? 
because the, the landing pages will still be live, but you will no longer be able to edit them. One other thing that I recommend you do, because I do not know how long it will be until we get landing pages, is that you come to landing pages, create a new page in the upper right, choose as a landing page, click create page. On the right hand side of this, look for the lead form drag it to the left and let it go. Go ahead and give this a name and call it lead form, right? Configure widgets. It's got a green check mark, we're good. Click done and publish, okay? So once you have that lead form saved, it will be here under landing pages. You can click these three dots, edit, oops not edit, sorry, I hit the wrong button. That's my bad, three dots, change URL, and you can at least change this back into lead form or whatever you wanna call it. So once you have this, save it. Because if you decide to use some other website to create a blog somewhere, to do anything outside of your website experience from KW, you will be able to embed this on any other site, any other place. And that will capture leads and drop them in command. Okay. So take that one step before you convert and save any landing pages you previously built that you like. Not ones that are, you know, listing specific because you won't be able to edit them any longer. But if you had created a landing page about Louisville, North Carolina or anything else, copy those links and you can still access them and share them. You just won't be able to edit them anymore. Okay. So I recommend highly that you take those two actions before you convert. And we're remembering, we do not have to convert yet. I would say we're going to see a forced conversion by the end of the year. I don't have a specific date, but it's not right now. Okay. It's not right now. Sean, on kwtechcoach.com, which is my website for you guys, I will upload this. If you slide down, down, down the page, there's a featured class right here. I'm going to replace the paid ads experience with this class today, at least for a couple of weeks, and I will continue to teach on this. Yep, you're absolutely welcome. And day three of boot camp, which it starts in three days. It starts next week on Monday. Day three of boot camp is always about the website. So if you guys ever need a refresher, just know that every month when I teach boot camp on day three, it is going to be about the websites and the app. Okay. Cool. Plus, you can always schedule a one on one with me right from the home screen of here. Schedule a consult, click. You can schedule 30 minutes or 15 minutes with me, just the two of us. Okay. All right. Good deal. So our marketing profile is still important. We do not have landing pages yet. We do not have custom pages yet. And if you convert, you will lose your custom pages. I have some agents that are like, absolutely not. I'm not converting until they give them to me. I get it. Um, and, and again, you don't have to convert it yet. But what is coming soon is that home value. So we're going to have like an enter my home address situation. And then it will generate a, a generic home value for them and say, you know, please reach out to me for a more specific home value. That's coming. The vendor page is coming. The team sites are coming. The ability to create custom pages are coming. I think we'll see that first. And then landing pages are coming, but I don't know when, okay? Down here on your resource guide, this QR code takes you to Keller Williams University training on the website. So they will continue just like I am to roll these out. So if you want additional resources, they will have it. it is my understanding that answers.kw.com, which is where I quite often send you guys, 
um, to get answers about things. I don't think any of the new stuff is updated yet. So I think you're still looking at old. Yeah, this is all still the old stuff. So once those articles come out, I will start sharing them in your Facebook pages or your um, WhatsApps, depending on which of my market centers you're in. Um, I'll publish out those articles as soon as I see them hit. Okay. Any questions right now? Good. I'm not going to take this one all the way through because it's not my account, but I just want you guys to see what the experience looks like. You're going to click upgrade my website. It's going to show you a video about the website. Okay. It's going to say easily make real-time updates, create engaging blogs, easily capture more leads in new ways, highlight your preferred vendor, increase flexibility. Okay. It's going to show you a video. You're going to click next. It's going to say, we need to confirm your subdomain. Do you want to continue using your current subdomain or do you want to select a new one? Okay, so you would click either I confirm this is what I want or you could make a change here and then confirm and then claim your subdomain. Okay, I'm not gonna take it any, I might be able to take it one step further. If not, I'll fix it. Okay, so then it's going to say, preview what your clients will see on your new agent website. If you wish to edit any of the pages before you make your new site live, now is the time. So after you keep moving, you can't change anything on your old website anymore. Then you have to click I understand, and then you'll go again. And I think it gives you one more opportunity to stop, right? if you're not ready. But I mean, it's that simple. It just walks you through each step and then it turns on, okay? I don't wanna mess someone else's site up, but that's essentially how it works. It's, you're just clicking the next button, accepting that you understand something and next. So the, the actual conversion is super simple, okay? I'm gonna log out from these folks, go back to myself here. And let's talk editing. So once you do, click the buttons through. The back end is going to now look like this instead of what you're currently seeing. It's going to have this big blue manage my website up here. You're going to click edit my website here to take you into the editing. But what is still going to be inside of command is the ability to change your subdomain, right? It's going to still show you your app code, which I use in my email address, that kind of, my email signature rather, that kind of thing. So that's your app code. You can still enable or disable Keller Home Loans, Keller Covered Home Insurance quotes from your website and the neighborhood boundaries. So if you're in an area where you do not like to show neighborhood boundaries, you can disable those. You can still do that from here. Just make sure you confirm your changes by saving changes in the lower left corner right there. Down a little bit below that is your forced registration. I keep mine set to two. By default, it's unrestricted. That means visitors can go to your website and look at as many properties as they want to. They're never going to be asked to register unless they click the button to ask you a question or um, request to see a property, that's going to ask them to create an account. You could set it to 10 properties, two properties, or no properties, which means they can run a search, but as soon as they try to click into the details to see the property, it's going to ask them to register. So I like to keep mine set at two, okay? But it's up to you where you have that set. So all of that is still there and you can save the changes down here at the bottom. Okay, under the testimonials tab, your old testimonials from your old version of the website are still here. So you can see all of my old testimonials are still here and accessible. I can still read them. I can still click through them and all the things. And I'll show you exactly where you can add them here in a minute. Okay, 
and you can still manage your collections from command. So if you have four buyers that are looking for a four bedroom, two bathroom home in 27106 between 400,000 and 600,000, you could set up that search and you can send it to those specific people. So that abil ability is still here in command. So any questions about what we can still do inside of command for our website? Marketing profile, to recap, domain, our app code still here, disabling and enabling of Keller Home Loans, Keller Covered Neighborhood Boundaries, forced registration still here, access, previous testimonials, and set up collections. Good? Cool. All right, let's click the Edit My Website button. So once we have the new experience turned on, this is where we make our edits. Brings us into a new dashboard here. Let me get rid of those. Okay. We have some quick start buttons right here at the top. So if I wanted to create a blog post, I could just click here. If I got some new photography done of various areas or something, I could upload images here. I could enter a new testimonial. So maybe somebody left me a review on Google and I wanted to display that review here on my agent site. I could click the quick testimonial button. I could upload a video from Vimeo. I could upload a video from YouTube. Okay. I can see my website address up here at the top. Remember, we do not use www. www actually stopped being used like, I don't know, seven or more years ago. So no new websites after that use www. It's just the existing website still had it. Do not put it in front of your website. It will give you a security error. So hey, if Monica, I go, yep. Quick question. Um, my computer froze for about 30 seconds before uh -huh. you took us into that darker page we just left. How do, how do we get there? Yep, I'll show you that. Absolutely. Real quick, if you put www in front of your website, it's going to give you a security error. So we don't want to do that. No www. Everybody good? Okay, Sean, when I'm here, and consumer, once I have converted, all I click is edit my website, and that's what brings me into that darker environment. Perfect. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Now, we can edit our website down here below. So I can edit my custom contact me form. It's going to bring it up. If I wanted to make some edits here, I don't recommend that you do that yet just leave it as it is but you this is where you would access it um the main thing i would work on right now is the home page so that's where we're going to start if i click on the home page this is where most of your customization is going to begin at least for now at least for now okay as it grows we're in a, like a soft release right now again not forced so the home page is where you're going to see the most editing capability at the moment. So the first little thing right here is the listing search module. So that's this bar up here. By default, I think it said find your dream home or something to that effect. Okay. If I drop this down, this is where I can swap out those images. So I have five images that are available. By default, they will have five KW like provided images here like this one in the kitchen. If you own some really high quality photos, you can upload them here. If you want that moving video background, again, it has to be a GIF format. So you could take a video that somebody made for you and you could make a GIF out of it. If you need something done like that, um, if you're an iPhone user, I can't help you. If you're an Android user, I can probably help you with that. Um, I can just do it for my phone. That's how I made this one right here. I just took an existing video and made it into a little section of it and do a GIF on my phone. Okay. So to add an image, 
you're just going to click the add image button. It gave me this little block here. I'm going to click on it. These are the KW provided images. So if you wanted, it's um, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, this one's mine. I uploaded those myself. That's a KW provided one. And so is this. So say I wanted to use this one. There you go, right? It pops it right in. I can click the X in the upper right corner, but I will have to get rid of one of my other pictures because I can only have five. Okay, I can only have five pictures. So I'd have to get rid of something. And I am going to get rid of this video because I don't own it. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off, right? Um, I could hit the edit pencil and edit this, this image and change the crop and that kind of stuff if I wanted to. I don't feel a need to do that right now, but you could. Okay. And again, to add an image, you get to this little spot, you expanded the listing search module. You can either upload files from your computer or you can use the existing KW if you just want to switch out a little bit what it looks like. But if you wanted to like grab something from your computer that you had, Maybe I wanted to display this one. I can upload it. I can give it a name. Click upload. So that's going to upload that image for me. And then I could have that be my fifth image. Always click save in the upper right corner. It is automatically saving, but I like to be safe. So just click that save in the upper right corner, anything you change. Okay. Again, I could click on here. I could change the title. Love where you live is kind of my tagline. If you have your own, you could change that and it would change what displayed above the search box. So those are pretty simple changes that you can make right there. Any questions about changes to the listing search module? Good. Okay. Next up is your um, premier listings, preferred listings, whatever you want to call them, you know, exclusive listings, whatever you want to call them, luxury listings. You can really choose. I just made mine say properties you will love. Okay. You can give it a description. Check out my featured properties, right? If this is your listing, I like that verbiage. If it's not my listing, I don't like to say check out my featured properties. Um, maybe check out these homes I love in the area, whatever you want it to say. You will see that the preview of my website is starting to populate what I'm typing. This is going to take it time. <laughs> it's a soft rollout, people. But a lot of us are already using them. So eventually this will catch up and it will change what it says right underneath. And now you can see that I'm adding listings in a dynamic way. Previously, manually choosing the listings. Then it goes under contract. You got to go in and change it. What I'm doing now is I have it set to dynamic. I have it, my location set to a center point. I've chosen to display a maximum of 20 listings in a search radius of 15 miles. Okay. Around my, where is my map? My map is being slow. Please excuse this. It always loves to embarrass me when I'm on camera. It apparently doesn't want us to uh, search. Maybe it'll let me do it. So 27104, Winston-Salem. There we go. So I'm searching in a 15 mile radius around 27104 in Winston-Salem. I'm displaying a maximum number of 20 listings. 
and I'd have them sorted by recently updated. You could do price low to high, high to low, days on the site, newest to oldest, days on the site, oldest to newest, living area, price per square footage, price per living area, which wouldn't work for me at least in Winston-Salem because my MLS does not give exact square footage. So I usually like to keep recently updated because that way if it hit the market, if it had a price reduction, or if it got an open house scheduled, it's gonna push it to the front, right? So that's kind of how I like it to be. And then I can come down further and go listing categories for sale, sold, rent, or rented, listing status, active, pending, or coming soon. I've got it set to all when it's blank, it's just all of them showing. Property types, minimum bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. And now you see the price. I have mine set to $300,000 minimum because since they're my featured properties, I kind of wanted them to be at least a little more. This is where if you're a luxury agent, you might want to put your minimum threshold in your market. So from memory, I'm pretty sure it is Winston-Salem is $700,000. Greensboro, you guys are either, either seven hundred dollars or 800000 Chapel Hill and Durham, I think you're both 800,000 and the Outer Banks, I believe you guys minimum threshold is a million to make it luxury. Okay, get with your market center MCA um, for that number. They know those thresholds. Okay, I could even use keywords, but I'm pretty happy with the way that this has been working thus far. It's just targeting the area that I really like to work um, with listings of a price point that I really like. Again, I'm going to hit save. I always like to hit save. And then if I go back to my website, we can take a look at what it's looking like. So you see everything is above 300,000, right? And they can individually scroll through pictures of listings from this little card, or they can scroll through to the next listing. And I have mine set up to 20, to sh show 20, that is. Cool. So you can get really granular with how you want those properties to show up, which I think is really neat. Okay. Testimonials. When you start getting new testimonials on your website, you'll be able to pull them in. But I just expanded this. I have it set to display. You could hide it if you wanted to. If you didn't have testimonials yet, you can completely just hide that section of the website by choosing hide. You can give it a title. Obviously, I'm y'all's technology trainer. I am an agent, but I don't sell. So I have it showing what agents say about working with me. And then a description. You could have your set to say what clients say about Martin, right? So whatever you want it to say. And I can sort by the newest published date. I can um, display up to 15. Well, it says between one and 15 inclusive. I'm going to try 20 because I haven't tried it yet. Um, filtering, I can filter them down if I want to. And then I've just pulled in eight, but I can click this plus button. Okay. And when I have new ones, I just click create new. I can bring over those classic ones that I had. So I can just look at what they were, paste them in here, put the client's first and last name and everything that they had put under here. That's how I brought my existing ones in. Okay. Was by copying and pasting what already existed. The new capture i don't know that i have gotten a new testimonial on that yet but it is my understanding they will not automatically publish and they did that as a favor to us right because if somebody said hey monica sucks so i freeze or i don't know that i would necessarily want that showing up on my website so we do need to turn it on once we receive it. But any existing ones, you would just copy and paste in by clicking add new testimonial. And then you just copy it over. Okay. 
I'm assuming they're going to kind of show up here when the new ones come out. They're literally adding new stuff to this every day. It looks like we can now star some of them. I guess that will make them show up front and center, maybe. I haven't seen that star yet. So that's how you add the new ones in. Okay. Questions on that? And obviously, I can help you guys, right, to walk through this individually if you need help. Last up, my blog. Okay. So here is your blog content. It's currently there. I have it set to dynamic. You can change it to advanced if you want to. You could hide the blog if you don't like it. Um, I just have it set to dynamic though. Okay. So once that is set to dynamic, it's just pulling any blogs that you have. It's just going to cycle them. As soon as you create them, it's going to pop them up there. Okay. So now let's look at creating a blog. So again, we were editing the home page. That's really the most updates that you can do right now. But here's the blog list page. I can see what's currently being displayed there. And I can use the quick add blog post to create a new blog. So I can click blog post. I can give it a headline. And you will see it start to populate over on the right. I can give it a sub headline. little blurb underneath the headline. Hero means adding an image. So I could take one of my images that I have and upload it here. Can give it a caption. I can give credit to whoever did the picture if it's not mine. Okay. And then I can type my blog in. So if I wanted additional pictures in here, I could put them in and things of that nature. I could use chat.ai or open.ai um, for chat GPT if I needed it to write me some blog content. And it's also my understanding it's not here yet, but I've heard we're going to have the KW provided blogs. We're going to have the ability to write our own blogs. And third, we're supposed to have a way to link to third-party blogs. So like if your lender has really good blog content, you're, there's supposed to be a way upcoming that will um, allow you to link to their blog from your own. So those should be the three that we have when it's all said and done. And then again, KW said that they are going to continue to push out additional content, right? So that's how you go in there and add a blog. You just type your blog content here. And it's going to start showing up. It's a little laggy. And then you would click publish. Once you publish it, it would become live on your site. Okay, so for right now, that is about all that we can edit, okay? So really focusing on the home page, really focusing on blog posts and adding previous testimonials that already existed in our historic website. But again, we don't have to convert yet. I will let you guys know when they give me a date by which you need to convert. But it's also my understanding that if we don't do it by that date, they will just be converted for us. And they will show up in the new experience 
without us actually taking action. So making sure that we save any landing pages, create that um, lead capture form. I think that that's just a good safe practice because that way you have it. Um, if you want to embed it somewhere else. Okay. Are you on the Zoom somewhere? There we go. So any questions? I know it's a lot to take in. It does have a tour button. I've already got mine set up. So obviously it didn't run me through the tour again. When you first set it up, it's going to give you a tour and it's going to say, click here to do this. Click here to access your blog. It's going to actually walk you through it. But you can upload videos from Vimeo or YouTube in your blog. So for all of us that wanted to add videos of us discussing something, videos of us doing a property tour, any of that kind of stuff, you will be able to do that through the blog. And then if you wanted to share that specific thing with someone, I'm just going to open this one up. You would just be able to copy this and paste it anywhere you want it. You could send it in a text. You could paste it on Facebook. And it would drive people here to be able to see. I know, pretend this is not a Keller Williams one. This is a video of Martin talking about buying trends right now and interest rates, right? Then Martin could take this and share it out. Okay. So what do you guys think? Do you like them? Do you think they look nice? Are you excited? Silent crickets. You love it. You're welcome. Good. I'm glad you guys like them. I really love the way they look. Yes, they come with some caveats. Yes, we're use, losing some of the functionality that we currently had. And it's opened up a whole world of improvements that we can get that I think we were limited in the previous experience with. Um, also keep in mind, if you know have any clients that speak a different language, they can click on the little globe up top and they can change the language that they're seeing your website in, at least to these for now. So I know that they're first targeting languages spoken in our KW worldwide communities first, and then they're going to just continue to add. Okay. Good deal. All right, my friends, if we don't have any more questions or comments, I'm going to go ahead and start stop this recording. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will get this added to the home screen of kwtechcoach.com by end of business today in case you need to go back to review. And don't forget on this sheet that I shared with you, you can scan this and take a class with KWRI. It's no cost. Um so they have multiple of those classes available. So, all right, my friends, I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll talk to you all soon. See ya.